How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Vora Motors. I'm Brandon Yavis bringing you another guide to maintain your ride. This video is for all my Fido riders and we're going to show you how to remove and reinstall both your front and your rear wheels. Reasons why you want to do this, maybe you have a flat tire and you want to change or patch your inner tube. Maybe your tires have gone bald because you've been doing too many burnouts and you need to replace your tire. Maybe you need to replace the motor on your Fido. Or maybe you just want to play a prank on your friend and steal their wheels. Either way, I'm going to go in depth and show you everything you need to know, so let's get right into it. Alright, we're going to start off this video with the removal of the front wheel. And on either side, you will find these wheel nuts. Go ahead and grab your comically sized wrench and uh, start loosening up those nuts. You only have to loosen one of them because they're both connected to the same pin and you'll just be able to pull out the pin later. Once you get one of the nuts pretty loose, you can back it off with your finger and save that nut for later. Once you get the nut off, you'll find these special washers. They have a little tip on them. And then as you pull the pin through, you'll find a couple more washers will drop down into your hand. You'll find these same washers on the other side. I dropped mine. And then once you pull the pin completely out, the wheel will come free. Here's what the pin looks like. Here are some washers and spacers. Here are those special washers that we were talking about earlier. And here's the other wheel nut. So now let's take a look at this wheel and let's take off the tire. We're gonna start by deflating the tire. Go ahead and remove the valve cap. And I like to stick an Allen wrench in the valve and you'll hear a whoosh of air as the tire deflates. Once you get the tire deflated, go ahead and flip it over, and we're going to go ahead and remove the disc brake rotor. Six screws hold it on, and you can use an Allen wrench to loosen those screws. We're taking off the brake rotors because as we remove the tire, there's a good chance that we could bend the rotor. A bent rotor will have trouble sliding through the two brake pads, and if you end up getting any grease or fingerprints on your rotor, your brakes will squeak and they won't brake as effectively. Once you've got all the screws out, go ahead and just pinch the center and the rotor will come off pretty easily. Set that in a safe place where it won't get dirty. And then we've got a rim shield over here. This one we actually cut in half so that it could fit onto the small tire. And you're going to stick that right onto the rim, make sure that it uh, goes beneath the tire. And that's going to help protect our rim as we get our tire spoons and we lift off the tire. You just kind of stick your tire spoon in uh, underneath the tire and try to lift part of the lip up and over the rim shield. Once you got one tire spoon in there, you can go ahead and put another one in on the opposite side of the rim shield. And what that'll do is that'll help get one section of tire completely over the rim shield and that'll prepare us for our next steps. Because these wheels are so small, this can be a little bit tricky. Remember to take your time and do your best to not damage the rim. Once you've got your tire sitting on top of your rim shield, you can go ahead and pull out your tire spoons. And then go ahead and spin the wheel while holding the rim shield. This will gradually take one side of the tire off the rim. And once you're done, you can remove the rim shield. Next we're gonna go ahead and remove the inner tube and this is just tucked in underneath the tire and on top of the rim. So go ahead and pull this out. And when you get to the valve, go ahead and push the valve stem through and pull it out the other end. The valve is part of the inner tube, so it will come out with the inner tube. Next we're going to get the rest of the tire off the rim. You can use the rim shield and the same process as before, but I find it a lot easier to just muscle the tire off. Now if you pull your tire off because you have a flat, you can patch your inner tube or you can replace it. If you choose to patch the inner tube, make sure you inspect the inner tube for wear and pull out whatever thorn or sharp object caused the puncture in the first place before patching. Also inspect your tire for any debris or sharp objects that could have caused the puncture. And if you find any sharp objects embedded in the tire, it's best to pull them out of the tread side of the tire. That way they do minimal damage to the tire's rubber. Now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the tire or install a brand new tire. The side where the brake rotor sits on should be facing the ground now. It's important to note that these tires are directional and you can figure out the direction by finding the arrow on the tire. 
The way I'm holding the tire right now, it wants to rotate clockwise. So we'll make sure that the way the wheel is sitting on the ground, the wheel will also rotate clockwise on the Fido. So I'm gonna go ahead and muscle on the first half of the tire. Just get it sitting inside the rim. Again, you can use the tire spoons and the rim shield here, but I find it easier to just use brute force. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the inner tube. Take note that these inner tubes have a curved valve stem and that the valve wants to point away from the disc brake rotor. In this case, our disc brake rotor is facing the ground, so our valve is going to face the ceiling. If you don't do this right, you will have a very hard time filling up your tire because the disc brake rotor will be in the way. So go ahead and locate the hole where the valve is going to go through. And I like to start with the valve. Then once you've got the valve through the hole, you can go ahead and tuck in the rest of the inner tube. It's going to sit just on top of the rim. By the way, it's a lot easier to do this if the inner tube is completely deflated. Then we're going to go ahead and grab our rim shield again and tuck in part of the tire into the rim. In fact, tuck in as much as you can. We can get a good amount going here before we need the rim shield. You're going to stick the rim shield on the rim and again, you're just going to turn the wheel and the rim shield is going to slowly push the tire back onto the rim as you can see here. When you get to the end, it's going to get tighter and tighter, but rubber stretches and you will be able to do this. Just give it some good force and your tire will eventually find its way onto the rim. It looks pretty good, but it's still flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up really quick. There we go, nice and full. And it's time to reinstall the disc brake rotor. So set it down in the middle. Make sure that the arrow on the rotor and the arrow on the tire are both facing the same direction. That's a surefire way to know that you've installed your tire correctly. Also, any text that's on the disc brake rotor should be facing out. You should be able to read it. I'm gonna go ahead and get these screws in finger tight first. And I'm gonna go ahead and snug them up with the Allen wrench. You'll notice that I like to tighten down these screws in a star-shaped pattern tightening a screw and then jumping to the opposite screw and then going opposite of that. This just helps make sure that the rotor stays flat. And then you can tighten those up completely with the Allen wrench. Oh, and don't forget to put that little valve cap on. All right, we're gonna go ahead and install the wheel on the pin. Starting with the pin, you'll notice that it already has a wheel nut on it. And the wheel nut is pretty loose just to make sure that there is enough room to slide it onto the frame of the Fido. Go ahead and grab one of those special washers with the little pins and stick it on. Make sure that the pin is pointed away from the wheel nut. And then you're gonna go ahead and slide on one of the flat washers. And following that, you're gonna slide on this little spacer. Next, the wheel goes on, and I'm gonna insert this on the disc brake rotor side. So slide that all the way in, it'll come out the other side of the wheel. And then another spacer. And then the washer. And then the special washer with a locating pin. Again, that's gonna face in towards the wheel and away from the wheel nut. And then you can put on the other wheel nut. Again, keeping these pretty loose because this entire thing has to slide onto the frame of the Fido before it gets tightened down. When we slide this unit onto the frame of the Fido, the frame is gonna sit right here in between the washer with the locating pin and the flat washer. Same for the other side. All right, let's go ahead and pop it on. As you're reinstalling the wheel, make sure that the brake rotor slides in between the brake pads on the caliper and that the frame of the Fido slides in between those two wheel washers on the pin. I left my extra set of hands at home today, but it does help if you have an extra set to hold the wheel up while you tighten it. 
You can also flip the Fido upside down on its handlebars and that makes it a lot easier to install as well. Once you get it right about where it needs to go, go ahead and get those wheel nuts finger tight. And before tightening them too much, make sure that the pin on the locating washer fits into the hole in the frame of the Fido. Once you've confirmed that on both sides, you can continue tightening down the wheel nuts. Grab your comically sized wrench and tighten everything down so that your wheel doesn't come off when you're riding. Once you're done tightening it down, give your wheel a good spin, make sure everything is working as it should, and that's how you change out the front wheel. Let's move to the back of the Fido and let's talk about how to do the same for the rear wheel. Removing the rear wheel is a little bit more complicated, but not impossible. Locate the motor wire and go ahead and remove it from these fasteners on the frame of the Fido. This will give us a little bit more slack and a little bit more wiggle room while we're working. Next thing we're going to do is pull this little rubber cap off and you can just slide that up the wire for safekeeping. Next we have to remove the fender and there are four screws, two on each side here, one up top, and one really hard to get one right up here in the front. They use an Allen wrench, so you can go ahead and pull those two side screws off. And then pull the top screw off. And we're not going to do the last screw just yet, we'll come back to that. Let's go ahead and back off these wheel nuts. There's one on each side. Get your wrench and go ahead and start unscrewing those. For this case, you will want to unscrew both. On the back side here, I went ahead and I took it off, and be mindful that there's also a washer back there. Hang on to these for safekeeping. The wheel now has a little bit of wiggle room and you can back it off just a little bit, just enough to fit an Allen wrench in between it and the front of the fender, and you can get that last screw out. This one is pretty tight and it does help if you deflate the rear tire. But eventually, you can get that screw out and remove the entire fender. As you can see here, our wheel still isn't completely free. We will have to loosen the brake caliper on the other side before we can fully remove it. There are two caliper mounting screws, one at the bottom here and one at the top. We're gonna go ahead and start with the bottom. The bottom one is gonna come completely out, but the top one, we're only gonna loosen it. And this is very important because they have a series of special washers and we can use the top one for reference when we reinstall the washers on the bottom one. Now with the brake caliper loose, we can pull the wheel completely off. It'll still be attached by the motor cable, so make sure you don't put any excess strain on the cable. For the rest of this demonstration, I've flipped the Fido upside down and I'm resting the wheel against it. Same as before, six screws hold on the brake rotor and we're gonna go ahead and back them off. And then we're gonna remove our brake rotor. Again, store it in a safe and clean place. Try not to get any fingerprints on it. Going to flip the wheel over, and because this wheel hasn't already been drained of air, we're going to go ahead and empty it out. Go ahead and pull off the valve cap, and stick in an Allen wrench to release all the air. Now I'm going to take my rim shield, and we're going to do the same process with the tire spoons. On one side of the rim shield, we're going to lift the tire up and over, and we're going to do the same thing with the other side with a different spoon. Work those spoons back and forth until the lip of the tire is completely over the rim shield and then you can pull those spoons out. Then go ahead and spin the rim shield around the tire to take that half of the tire off. And remove your rim shield when you're done. Push on the valve, pull it out, and with the valve will come the rest of the inner tube. And then on this side, I decided to use a tire spoon to pull the tire off, just to show you. It's pretty easy, just be careful to not scratch the rim. And once you get it started, it's pretty easy to just pull the rest of it off with some muscle. Now again, inspect the inner tube if you plan on reusing it. If you plan on replacing it, you can skip this step. But you definitely want to inspect the inside of the tire 
to make sure that there aren't any thorns or sharp objects that could potentially puncture your fresh inner tube. Pay attention to the directional arrow on the tire. Go ahead and set the rim on the inside of the tire. And I'm going to go ahead and use the rim shield to get the rest of the tire's lip inside the rim. Then we're going to go ahead and install our inner tube. Again, make sure that the valve is pointing away from the disc brake rotor. And just like before, the inner tube just tucks in underneath the tire and on top of the rim. Now I'll go ahead and use the rim shield to get the rest of the tire on, push a small section of the tire into the rim, stick the rim shield on, and then spin it around the tire. Now your tire and inner tube are both completely installed. I'm not going to air it up just yet though. Let's go ahead and reinstall our disc brake. Again, check to make sure that the arrow on the disc brake is facing the same direction as the arrow on the tire. Also make sure that any text or numbering on the disc brake rotor is facing out, and you'll know you've done the job right. And I'm going to go ahead and get those screws on finger tight first, and then I'll go ahead and snug them up with an Allen wrench later. Again, working in a star pattern to make sure that the rotor sits flat. I accidentally broke one of the screws here, and it's not that big of a deal, but just make sure that you're gentle. Now we're going to go ahead and put the valve cap back on. You'll notice that I haven't inflated the tire. I'm going to leave this one deflated until we get it completely on the Fido. With the Fido back upright, you're going to go ahead and slide the wheel right back where it belongs. Again, making sure that the brake rotor lines up in between the two brake pads and the caliper. And with those brakes pretty loose, the wheel should go in pretty easily. First thing we're going to do is tighten down that brake caliper. We're just going to snug it up, not going to completely tighten it down. You'll notice here that these washers are a little bit different. One is cone shaped and one is bowl shaped. And the cone shaped washer fits inside of the bowl shaped washer. Two washers on each side of the caliper. Use the mounting hardware on the top screw for reference. And we're going to go ahead and reinstall the fender now. So slide this into place. And I like to start with the top screw here. And then we'll do the side screws. Again, one on each side. And the one screw on front, we can get finger tight here. Go ahead with the Allen wrench and tighten those all down now. Go ahead and slide on your washer and your wheel nut. And start tightening down the wheel nuts on both sides, making sure that the wheel is as far into the frame as it can go. Get your big wrench and make sure that those are really tight. You don't want your wheel falling off. As you can see, our wheel is having trouble spinning because the brakes are currently engaged. We can fix this really quick by loosening up those caliper mounting bolts. Again, just loosen them. You don't have to take them off all the way. And then move that caliper side to side while spinning the wheel until you find that sweet spot where the brake pads don't touch the brake rotor. Once you found it, you can go ahead and snug those bolts up. You can also loosen or tighten this barrel adjuster up here just to fine tune it. Again, make sure that your brakes aren't rubbing and that your wheel can spin freely. Slide this rubber cover back down. And then go ahead and reinsert the motor cable into those little retainers on the frame. And after you air up your tire, you're done. And that's all it takes to remove and reinstall the wheels on your Fido. If this video was helpful for you, make sure you give it a thumbs up down below. And if you've purchased a Vora Motor Scooter, make sure you go ahead and subscribe because we post weekly videos on how to care for, maintain, and understand your scooters. Until next time, this has been Brandon Yavas with Vora Motors wishing you a safe ride. Cheers.